In this video, we'll talk about the stability of equilibrium solutions for autonomous equations and how we can use them to help determine what's going on when solving this type of equation. So overall, for autonomous equations, the solutions are very much focused around equilibrium solutions. They sort of form the basis and the background for what the solution is going to be doing, no matter where it starts. The point being, those give us constant solutions, and we know that we can't cross those lines. They give us sort of a framework to sketch these solutions around. We have words to describe these solutions to determine how they're going to behave in the context of these equations. So if we have an equilibrium solution y0, two differential equation, we say that solution is asymptotically stable or just stable if all solutions that start near that equilibrium solution will stay near and converge to it as t goes to infinity. The opposite idea is that of it being unstable, and that is if all solutions that start nearby go away as t goes to infinity. And in between this, we have semi-stable equilibrium solutions. And this basically means that some go away and some come towards this y0 as time goes on. Now, what does this look in terms of our phase lines? Well, if we have our phase line with our solution here in the middle, and we have arrows that both point into it, then this is asymptotically stable or stable because everything nearby converges in towards that solution as time goes on. But I don't care what happens far away, I only care what's right nearby, so I'm looking at just this one little mark and the arrows that are right next to it. So this one is asymptotically stable. If we have one where both arrows go away, that's unstable. And semi-stable has two cases, but the idea is that one side comes in and one side goes out. So down, down, or up, up, these are both semi-stable. So in terms of a phase line, that's how we can look at this different stability. What about in terms of the actual function f itself? So if we're solving the equation dy dt equals f of y, I can draw a graph of what f of y might look like. Let's say that's f of y. My equilibrium solutions are where f of y equals 0, so I can plot those three here on the graph. And now what do we see? Well, if we look at this first one here, we have our three solutions, one here, one here, and one here, give or take. And for the first one, f of y is negative for y less than this point, and it's positive for y bigger than it, which means here we're going down, here we're going up. So we have down, up, and we can see right here this will be unstable. because Everything's going away at that point. We got the second one, we have positive below, so going up into the point, negative below, going down into the point. This is going to be asymptotically stable. And for the last one, we see that we are below in both cases. We're below the point both with y less and y bigger than the point. So that's two down arrows. That's going to be semi-stable. So the graph going from below to above at the equilibrium solution makes it unstable because it's negative below, so it's going away. Positive above, so it's also going away. So that's unstable. Going above to below makes it as impactly stable. And touching the axis and going away on either side will make it semi-stable. But we can actually represent this condition here going down to up in terms of the slope or the derivative at that point. So another characterization for these solutions are that if f prime at y0 is positive, that's the positive slope going negative to positive, that's going to be unstable. If f prime at y0 is negative, then it's asymptotically stable. And just like some of our tests from earlier calculus classes, if it equals zero, then we have no idea. The test is inconclusive. You have to go back to actually looking at the graph and seeing whether it's above and below the axis to determine what's going to be there. But all semi-stable cases will fall into that case of having this derivative being zero. So the graph and the setup works every time, but you can also use the derivative to classify whether points are unstable or stable just based on this sort of setup here. Those are the ideas of stability of equilibrium solutions and how we can use this idea to determine what's going to happen to our solutions as time goes on for these autonomous equations.